What's going on guys, M00 Photo, and today I am here to talk to you guys about my video rig, how I power it, uh, what kind of camera I use, and the pieces that I use with the rig to make it functional. That being said, we're gonna start with the pros and cons of powering your rig with a V-mount battery. I power all of my set with a V-mount battery. That being said, we all know that the V-mount battery has uh, the little prong on the bottom that uh, hooks up to your V-mount plate. But if you're not using a plate, so you're probably most likely relying on D-tap wires to power your rig. I don't really trust those things. Why? Because you never know. You could buy a D-tap wire and it could very well turn out to be a nightmare and burn your camera. So I prefer using a USB-C cable. Why? Because I know it's safe and yes, it's got pros and cons and we'll just start with the pros. The pros is that you know your camera is safe. Well, I mean, there is nothing that promises for things to be 100% safe, but you know it's safer than using a DTAP uh, input. Uh, the problem with that is that it'll only give you a trickle charge. What I mean by that is that it's not going to give you enough voltage to fully power the camera without a battery being in there. So how that's gonna work? The camera will still drain from the battery, but the battery is not going to drain as fast as if you were only using the battery itself. And since I have a Ninja V mounted on this rig, uh, I have a VND kit, which is a variable uh, ND kit that's electronic. I love using a V-mount and a V-mount plate because then I can power everything all together with one V-mount battery and it lasts me almost all day. So usually I bring two or three V-mount batteries with me and that pretty much, you know, give me a full day shoot. Uh, the Ninja V, we all know that with the Ninja V, the FX3 and S7S3 do offer uh, ProRes RAW and I love having that flexibility. Why? Because you never know, you know, what your client is going to request. And if they do decide, to, I mean, they do request something like ProRes RAW, they want, you know, their footage to be, you know, in RAW format, you can always, you always have the flexibility to shoot that way. I'm not asking anyone to go fork out $600, you know, to buy a Ninja V uh, or $700, you know, considering the, the buying the, the SSD. But if you do have the means, I highly do recommend it. Uh, for audio, I do use the handle that comes with the Sony FX3. I just think it's a lot easier. You just put your uh, condenser microphone on there. It offers phantom power and you know you have professional quality audio. Right now I'm not using it because I have these wireless Go mics that I'm using. Uh, I think they're really reliable, especially, you know, with things like YouTube or, you know, you're doing an interview and you just don't have the flexibility to set up a, you know, boom mic or uh, a condenser microphone. It, it's flexible, it's portable, it's practical, and it makes your life a lot easier. Uh, for focusing, right now I have a Sony 16 to 35 f2.8 lens mounted it's a gm lens mounted on this camera and we all know those lenses are super reliable sony did, did an amazing job you know with those lenses however every now and then sometimes you know you need to do manual focus and i have a tilta uh not the wireless focus but the tilta uh focus pulling wheel that i use with this camera and it works perfectly with my set uh, so for the VNDs, this is a Tilta VND cage and the good thing about it is that it offers me variable ND so coming from indoor to outdoor it always gives me, I know it's not as reliable as the Sony FS5, the uh, Sony FX6, FX9 that automatically you know, adjusts that for you but it's still better than having to manually you know, uh, have to adjust that. Uh, from the front because you know it gives you shake and all that and you know with this I literally just hold it to the side and just you know move either you know front to lessen or you know back uh, to reduce the lighting it's something that I really enjoy having you know in hand because 
it makes the camera a lot more versatile in many shoot, shooting scenarios. Uh, so as you can see here on the left side, I have this handle. This handle can be powered by a battery. Uh, it's a Sony uh, FS, FZ something battery that you can input here. Correct me if I'm wrong, but yeah, so you can put it in there and you can still extract power from this handle to either power the camera or power uh, anything on that on your rig for that matter so it's just an extra and also it does play a huge role to give you flexibility this didn't come with this cage because the cage that i have on the fx3 right now is that half cage that unites in the middle from tilter but i bought this cage initially well i bought a cage for the sony uh a7s3 that came with this handle and since i couldn't use it on the fx3 i just you know brought the handle to the cage and it works wonders. It gives me, you know, a third point of contact or at least, you know, a second point of contact to make sure that I have as much stability as possible, you know, on my shooting. As you can see, you know, most everything that I shoot, I shoot it manual, uh, handheld. I do not use, I have a gimbal, I have a, an RS2 and I can't remember the last time I've used it. I mostly use it only, you know, when I'm using it with the, the Sony A6600. This footage is being shot with the Sony FX3. Uh, the camera is on tripod, of course, tripod, of course. And all the B-roll that you're seeing is shot with the Sony A6600. And I always use a color checker X-Rite, uh, the Passport version. I find it really reliable and very flexible, really, again, portable. Portability is everything, because when you have to go to a shoot, you don't need to have like bulky, huge, items to carry with you. So I love this because you can just, I can just throw it in my pocket and, and go ahead. I have the one for photos and the other one for videos. So, you know, it's great to have uh, both because I'm a photographer, you know, before I was a vide videographer and, you know, so I just invested in it because I was like, well, you never know. I could end up, you know, needing it. So I'm glad you know, I invested in it back then. Uh, but other than that, please go ahead and post your questions down there if you have any. Oh, I almost forgot. So for my top handle on the FX3, I bought this 3D printed, uh, I won't call it a holster because it's not a holster, but it's like a mount that holds it to give it some reinforcement in case you know you decide to mount extra things on it. And it's really sturdy. I bought that from eBay for seventy-five dollars, and I'll make sure you know to post the link down there in case any of you guys is interested in purchasing it. But other than that, please go ahead, post your questions down there if you have any of them. Uh, if not, please go ahead and subscribe and hit the bell if you like this uh, review. And until next time, again, thank you very much. I appreciate your guys' time, and thank you.